This is our fifth video in our uh, topic on orthopedic uh, trauma general principles. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about when fractures don't heal or fracture non-unions. Um, so that term uh, is what we say when a fracture does not heal. Um, so um, I say remember here, I'm not sure if this is something you've covered or not, um, but um, I'll briefly go through this. What's needed for fracture healing? So what's needed for fracture healing are cells that can make bone, an extracellular matrix for the cells to sit in, uh, a blood supply to uh, help bring the molecules and growth factors needed um, and uh, for bone to grow, and uh, some type of stability, like an environment where there's some stability uh, so that the bone can kind of set up shop and actually bridge a gap like this. And here you can see an example of a non-union. So a fracture uh, has not healed here, has not healed here. You can see there's a little bit of bone here trying to heal, but the fract, the bone that has not healed even propagates that gap, even propagates into the area where it's trying to make bone. So um, importantly, a patient with a fracture non-union is going to have pain, and they should have pain right at the fracture non-union site or tenderness at the non-union site. So a lot of times a non-specific pain can be much harder to determine if it's really a non-union because uh, they may have sort of generalized limb pain, not necessarily tenderness at the non-union site. Uh, but x-rays should show a persistent fracture line. So persistent fracture line at a time point when you feel like it should have healed with pain, you're worried about a non-union. So to break things down s simply, non-unions can occur for two reasons. One is atrophic, okay? So what that means is that there's a lack of biologic requirements. So lack of cells, lack of blood supply, lack of growth factors, um, and there's really no bone being made. So here you can see at this location here, you have a little bit of this gap. Uh, maybe the, the blood supply here is poor. Uh, looks like they've put some cables around the, the tibia. Maybe that has caused the uh, blood supply to be stripped away. Um, and in these cases, you may need to do bone grafting, and you may need to do something to stimulate the biologic environment here and bring in growth factors and cells. As opposed to a hypertrophic nonunion, where in this case, there's lack of mechanical stability, and it's making bone. I mean, here you can see the normal outline of that proximal tibia is probably here. But you can see there's all this bone being made here, bone being made here, bone being made here. Um, but it just doesn't bridge across. And the reason it may not bridge across is because there's a lack of mechanical stability. So if this bone is constantly moving this way and this way, and this bone is constantly moving you know, this way and this way, sorry, um, you may not be allowing bone to sort of cross this bridge and instead it just sort of builds in this direction and this direction or builds outwards and doesn't really bridge the gap. So there's a lot of bone uh, but so much motion that the fracture doesn't heal. So for this treatment is just better stability. Maybe you go in and you fix this you know with a plate and screws and uh, then it heals. So um, you can also have a non-union due to lack of extracellular matrix, right? So you have a large defect here. So for instance, you have this massive gap, uh, and that's just something that can't heal. So, so you may have to do a bone grafting to provide what's called an osteoconductive scaffold, or some type of material or bone material for bone to grow onto. Lack of growth factors. Uh, sometimes it's hard to diagnose as a precise etiology. Like you often can't look at an x-ray, look at a patient and say, well, there's lack of growth factors. Um, but we do know when you have an atrophic non-union, let's say, you can administer growth factors either with bone graft or um, off the shelf growth factors to try and help a fracture heal, especially an atrophic fracture. So poor vascular supply, we sometimes attribute to smokers, diabetics. Occasionally, you can do a vascularized tra bone transplant. So you can actually bring in bone that has a live blood supply uh, or a flap to help a fracture heal. 
uh, when you have uh, potential blood supply in the intramedullary canal, but it's walled off in this case, uh, going in and opening this up to reestablish the intramedullary blood supply can help. I kind of already mentioned this. This is just showing another example of the hypertrophic nonunion, right? So bone is there, but can't bridge across. So here you can see a lot of bone trying to form um, laterally, right? It's coming either direction, but it just will not completely bridge this gap. So again, needs to be stabilized, doesn't need bone graft. So I'm going to stop there, and this last small section is going to be on pediatric fractures. Thanks.